Welcome to The Global Pulse, a short video series where our experts break down a trending topic in international business and why it matters to you. Africa is home for the largest trading area in the world in terms of population and also in terms of number of countries. There are 55 countries which have signed up for this pact. So is this a game changer? And I'm going to begin answering this question by uh, invoking a context. Some 20 years ago, The Economist magazine ran a cover story on Africa. Basically, it said it's a hopeless continent. And then 15 years later, it observed that some seven countries in Africa are among the fastest growing in the world. Then it reversed its position, ran another cover story titled The Hopeful Continent, Africa Rising. So the African growth syndrome is not accidental. It is an outcome of many years of reforms of the economies and financial sector empowerment of private initiative. Also simultaneously, countries have begun accessing international credit markets at arm's length, especially Eurobond uh, markets. Some 20 years ago, there were only three countries which were issuing in the Eurobond market. Now there are over 20. But there are challenges. And the challenges are where this Pact come, can come into play. One is that the markets are segmented, they are fragmented, and the level of trade within Africa is much lower than outside Africa. So in fact, Africans actually trade much more with the outside world than within Africa. It's close to 17 to 20% of exports are within Africa, the remaining is outside Africa. So these are, these are the challenges. And then a number of economies are highly concentrated on single commodities. So there are issues of diversity. So market fragmentation, market segmentation, and concentration of economies. And also the growth that I just talked about is impressive but it's not shared, it's not inclusive. So the African Free Trade Agreement came about in a big way, it's a bold vision. It is actually broader in scope than the other trade agreement around the world. And it includes not just movement of people and goods, but also services, competition policies, as well as property protection. And so this is, um, has a chance, an opportunity to help diversify economies, to create regional value chain, and also in the process of integrating, Africans are now incentivized to come together build infrastructure like roads and railways so that this integration of energy and infrastructure will be actually essential for integrating African markets. So, so, so there is now a chance even for integrated infrastructure within Africa that also leads to integration of the continent into the global economy. The other is, um, I talked about growth, very impressive, but it has been achieved without shared prosperity. It's not inclusive. So this agreement also has a, um, an opportunity to bring about inclusivity within the region. And what's interesting is that uh, this, uh, this park is happening at a time there are growing anti-globalization forces. There is growing populism 
And part of the reason is that uh, uh, trade is kind of viewed not being or providing shared prosperity. So Africa is going to learn from this and its design features. And also different, given that there is a large informal economy and now with the, with the, with the demise of uh, tariffs and non-tariffs, there is now a chance to formalize the informal uh, in economies and hence enhance, improve the livelihoods at the lowest level in Africa. So these are the bright side of this pact. Uh, and if this bright side of this pact is executed and achieved, this is in fact a game changer. Uh, 